Okay, well, let's get started. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce you to our guest speaker, Professor Tyler Cowan. Professor Cowan is the Harris Chair of Economics at George Mason University, and he's the faculty director of the Mercatus Center. He frequently writes on the economics of culture, and those are often the themes that you'll see show up in his very popular economics blog, Marginal Revolution. He's the host of Conversations with Tyler, and where he, for the past several years, has been interviewing many of the top thinkers of our time. And those conversations range from politics and economics to culture, sports, food, art, travel, really everything and anything. Um, and over the last year, uh, Tyler has spent a lot of time and given much of his attention to the COVID-19 pandemic in particular. Um, He's become an aggregator and synthesizer of new information as it emerges. Um, and I've, for one, have really appreciated a very cool headed approach to gathering complex information, information that changes on a daily basis as we learn more and really providing insight into a lot of these things for us. Um, today, he's gonna give us some current reflections on where we are. Um, and in particular, he's going to give us some updates and findings on the Fast Grants program. And so Fast Grants is an initiative that was launched last spring. And it's really an effort to get funds and resources to scholars, researchers who are working on issues related to the pandemic as quickly as possible. Grant making is often a very slow and sometimes cumbersome process. And in a time when this information was really, really critical, we needed to find ways to get funds into researchers' hands as quickly as possible. So that's days rather than months. Um, and so with that, Tyler, let me hand it over to you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Amy. Thank you for the kind words. I'll just talk for a short bit about, you know, what I've been doing in 2020 and also in 2021. And the main thing is this program called Fast Grants, which is part of the Mercatus Center at George Mason University. So as you all know, we are in the middle of a pandemic still raging. On the worst days, 4,000 Americans die. Many others have serious problems. Going back now to the spring, uh, our defenses against the pandemic were much less strong than they are today. And I was chatting with my friend, uh, Patrick Collison. Patrick is CEO and co-founder of a company named Stripe, uh, possibly a Templeton you even deal with Stripe. And he and I were talking about the problem that scientific funding can take a long time to come through. <clears throat> and we spoke to a number of scientists and from people we had spoken to before, very often say funding from our government can take six to nine months. Now at a time where vaccine allocation is moving much slower than it ought to, we're getting testing up and running, has moved much, much slower than it ought to. This is believable, but we collected data and uh, also with private foundations, not all of them, but many people had problems that it would take many months to hear back. Furthermore, it could take weeks or more just to prepare the proper kind of proposal. So if you submit to the federal government, you have to send in a PDF with a particular kind of font size. It has to meet all of the specifications. It's many, many pages. And it struck us that in the middle of a raging pandemic, uh, that was just a terrible approach and that it needed to be changed. But the institutions we had set up for the most part were not well organized to move rapidly. They were organized to move bureaucratically, which I find objectionable in the best of times. But you know, two years ago, it was something you could live with when you move bureaucratically in the midst of a pandemic. It is an absolute disaster. Again, think of it every day right now, 3,500 to 4,000 people are dying. Uh, job losses are immense. GDP has plummeted. In many countries, it fell 9 to 10%. That's really a big negative movement in GDP, prosperity, human welfare. Politics has become weirder and more hostile, I think in part because of the pandemic, all the riots we've had. If you coop people up, they're not all going to behave very well. <clears throat> So Patrick and I were saying, well, we should do something about this. And so we decided to start this program, Fast Grants. And uh, we vowed 
in the initial part of FAST grants that researchers could submit proposals that would take them about half an hour to fill out. It would just be basic information. Who are you? What do you want to do? Why is it important, right? And what's your track record? That was the proposal. You can do it in half an hour. And we vowed, this was the tough part, to get people back answers within 48 hours. We later switched this to two weeks rather than two days because we had both more proposals and there was more you needed to know to referee proposals. But Fast Grants assembled a team of 20 referees who did just phenomenal heroic work. Those are anonymous individuals, but they are essentially well-known or tenured academics at leading universities and research laboratories. Uh, they worked so, so hard. Some of our top referees in the early days would just stay up till 4 a.m. in the morning refereeing proposals. So all of FAST grants was set up actually in a few days. I think my conversation with Patrick was maybe April 9 or so. Uh, some of the programmers at Stripe who are absolutely wonderful, some of the world's best programmers created a portal that would allow us to receive and process these proposals. And they were then divvied out to the referees. And you know, within about a week after we talked about FAST grants, uh, money was already going out the door to researchers. And uh, people were getting funding to work on projects against COVID-19, you know, literally within a week. So first, we're glad they got the money. And second, uh, we regard this as a proof of concept that in emergency times, and perhaps even in, in, in not so emergency times, a lot of things could and should be done better and quicker and more decisively. Now, Fast Grants has <clears throat> been in existence about nine months. Uh, one key factor behind the success of Fast Grants is simply that the Mercatus Center, if I may be self-promoting for a moment, is in fact highly efficient and effective. And to tell uh, our finance team, our records keeping team, you know, ultimately our auditors, that we would be processing what amounted to about $43 million in grants to researchers uh, very quickly, uh, that we were actually able to do that. Uh, and I'm so proud of my various teams at Mercatus for really stepping up and doing a great job and there hasn't been a single grant that we you know, screwed up or were late on. The problem, believe it or not, is you, you'll get this at Templeton. It's the people, the universities, not people, taking the money, how slow they are. And I don't want to name names, but you would think in a crisis, they could be as fast to take the money as we are to give it out. But typically they are not. So the main delays in our process was the universities deciding they could take the money. Uh, that to me says something. So now with about nine months of experience under our belt, we have made, uh, I lose count, but I think it's 176 grants, give or take. Uh, we have charged overhead of 2% on those grants, which we think is extremely competitive. And again, I credit uh, the capabilities at Mercatus for that being possible. And uh, Overall, we uh, have directed, like I said, about $43 million. So our fundraising for this idea was very successful. Uh, I think people saw the urgency of the problem and they understood that uh, our funding mechanisms, our responses in general were, were far too slow for what has been you know, probably the greatest crisis in my lifetime. We will end up with at least half a million Americans dead Damage from long COVID perhaps is uncertain, but there's a good chance it could be significant. And again, jobs, GDP lost, general social turmoil, really just immense costs. So we went <clears throat> to people and said, if you can give us money, uh, we will get it out the door to researchers with minimum overhead and they will get on this problem. So you might be wondering, what are some of the projects uh, we've supported? Some of these are still in progress. But typically we were targeting projects that would yield a result in time for it to matter. So a lot of our early investments actually were in mRNA vaccines, which we thought uh, were going to be a big thing. And in fact, they were. 
uh, monoclonal antibodies. We made early investments uh, researching those areas. Those turn out to be largely successful, though I would say grossly underused because our current regime in terms of hospitals, regulations, publicity is still far too slow to use them. But in many cases, uh, they actually seem to work. Maybe our single biggest success was the support of a group of researchers at Yale University, and their group is called Saliva Direct. So if any of you know, there is both a test where they stick the things up your nose, which I hate, I really hate it, and then there's spit tests. So Saliva Direct was the group uh, <clears throat> that figured out how to do a spit test for much cheaper than it used to cost. It used to cost about $150 a test, which is not prohibitive for everyone, but it's prohibitive for mass use. They figured out a method of RNA extraction, which means you can do it, you know, maybe for $10 a test, which is not prohibitive for much wider spread use. And if last year you watched uh, the NBA finals, which were in terms of COVID were a big success, in terms of if you're a Laker fan, they were a big success. Uh, but in part to make the bubble work, the spit test was used very widely. And that was the spit test we supported. And there were even some articles in the press at the time, the Yale researchers could not get money in time from their own university, Yale, which is obviously a very wealthy, heavily endowed university. Things were slow and bureaucratic. No one was sure what the priorities are. So the notion that like cutting edge research that really has mattered, that is now used around the United States and indeed around the world in, in many dozens of labs, testing large numbers of people every day. People are more willing to get this test than to have the sticks jammed up their nose. That that happened because researchers at Yale came to George Mason University for funding. Uh, to me, that's great. I'm very proud of that. So uh, moving forward, the spit test, and in particular, the saliva direct spit test from Yale, it already is a big deal. It will continue to be a big deal. And my own university, uh, George Mason, we're starting this week, we're in hybrid mode, some of it face-to-face, -face, some of it Zoom, like we're talking. And how is George Mason opening up partly? Well, they are using a variant of the Yale saliva direct spit test. So my own university is using this uh, people coming to campus are supposed to test at least twice a week. Uh, this is week one, uh, but other schools have done this and made it work, and I'm pretty confident my school will make it work too. So uh, that's something I'm very proud to have supported. If you're asking what are the latest grants we have made, as you all probably have read, there are all these new strains of the coronavirus, and they are more contagious than the old strains. There's even a chance uh, that they're more dangerous, but definitely they're more contagious. There's the Brazilian strain, the South African strain, the English Kent strain. There's probably a California strain, possibly more, likely more. So the United States' ability to track these new strains, you know, say six weeks ago, uh, was really very weak. We were one of the worst wealthy countries at tracking strains. We had some mechanisms in place, but just we were we were set up to do it slowly, not to do it quickly. So we set out a call for proposals by email and just asked people, people we thought who might be involved or who might know someone who was involved, please submit your proposal for tracking the new strains. And in well under a week, uh, we were sending money out to seven different groups. I think it's now eight, uh, tracking the new strains. So a significant percentage of America's ability to track the new strains in a timely manner happened because when the money was needed, there's actually not a single other group out there that takes it as their direct mission to get money to things that matter, that need the money right away. Everyone wants it to happen, but it's not exactly anyone's responsibility. And we took that upon ourselves as uh, our responsibility. So uh, when you read about the new strains being tracked, again, a lot of that is due to uh, fast grants aid. And again, precisely because the strains are more contagious, they move more quickly, you need to track them right away. You can't 
spend a week writing up a proposal, send it in, get an answer back, say it's even a month, which, which would be considered remarkably fast in many parts of the philanthropic or governmental science establishment universe. It's just way too slow. So uh, that was the last thing we have done. And uh, a lot of my year I've spent overseeing the process, organizing, learning more about the science, uh, of course, raising money for what we've been doing, uh, speaking to media, speaking to scientists. On my blog, Marginal Revolution, I've tried to be a kind of aggregator of what is actually happening uh, with the pandemic and not being too political about it based in principles of what I would call market economics, incentives, the power of good decentralized mechanisms, the priority of speed in an emergency. But again, not trying not to politicize those concepts, but to present them as the common sense they are. So uh, there's more I could say. We're moving now to question and answer mode. Uh, some of you might know me. Feel free to ask about absolutely anything you want, but also if you wish to ask about fast grants or COVID-19 or anything else going on, I will be happy to do my best. And again, thank you Templeton Foundation for having me in. And thank you for all of the projects you support in many areas, including Liberty, but also as you very well know, you show the importance of science in a way that really matters. Thank you all for listening. And now we'll move to questions. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Tyler.